All of northern New Mexico's greatest qualities come together at the Timbers at Chama, a guest lodge located high in these stunning aspen-covered mountains. We sent longtime Elk Foundation volunteer and elk hunting expert Jay Houston, along with our Colorado Senior Regional Director Lance Schul, down to the Timbers to go on an archery elk hunt with the folks there and see for themselves how elk numbers are doing in this fabled piece of elk country. The region around Chama, New Mexico is famous as a place where the Old West is still alive. From the historic Chama and Tolik Railroad and Depot, to the beautiful and pristine San Juan Mountains, to the many working cattle ranches that dot the fertile valleys, this is a place where some of our finest traditions continue to roll right along. For outdoorsmen, it is also a place of legendary sporting opportunities. The cool, trout-filled rivers and incredible big game opportunities, including some of the most awesome elk hunting in the world. Continue to rise each and every year. We got a tremendous amount of elk, and even though we hunt free ranging elk and we cannot place any guarantees to our hunters, we always kind of indicate to them, you're gonna see a lot of animals when you hunt with us. So the animal population continues to grow. It's the last day of the hunt, and Jay Houston is about to find out just how right Bill is. This morning we decided to hunt an area that was a little bit different. Uh, we hunted uh, from this draw all the way from the, from the bottom of the draw all the way to the top. We had been hearing bulls up in that area for two or three days we could never get to, and we said, well, we're just going to spend a whole day uh, going after these elk. We got about two-thirds of the way up this draw, and whereas I think it was about 7 o'clock, uh, there was no sound at all, and at 7.01, the draw lit up. It was bugling like, like I've never heard before. Uh, in, in 18 years, I've never heard bugling like this. I guess you could call it a target-rich environment. We had to decide, what are we going to do here? We set up uh, on the center bull, the one that was, that was dead ahead because he appeared to be, the, sounded like he was the closest, it sounded like he was maybe 75, 80 yards out. I saw more upside in that area than I've ever seen in, in, in any way, period. The bulls were screaming. Uh, we had a game trail coming up right in front of us and, and, and as we were sitting there trying to decide okay, what's our next move? We could hear the elk coming up the trail. Now, here I am standing right on, slap on the game trail. I've got about a 14 inch pine tree right next to me and so I try to become a pine tree as fast as I can. I was just hoping that I would be able to get some sort of a quartering shot as he, as he came up, uh, up the trail. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work that way, and, and I found myself at full draw for about 50 seconds, and, and then that, that got to be pretty tough. Well, I've been bow hunting for a long time, and I know there's nothing that's, that's, that's really a done deal. Uh, so uh, we actually gave it some time, and then we went up to where the bull was standing. And, There's my arrow stuck in this piece of uh, oak branch about this big, you know, about two feet short of, of, of where that bull was standing. And, 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 you know, that's just the way it goes. It's, it's bow hunting. We had a great experience. I, I wish I could have taken that bull home. You know, if coming home with an animal every time was what this was about, I probably wouldn't be doing it. Uh, I can look back on this experience as probably one of, if not the best bow hunting experience of my life.